morning and welcome to Quest of the TV. I'm Pete Schuler. I'll be your host here today as the Quest of Men's Water Bowl team takes on Citrus College in a Western State Conference game. Citrus comes in with a record of 9-3. and three. Good season for the Fighting Owls so far. While the Cougars are 16-3 and three after just winning their first conference game last Wednesday. Uh, against LA Valley at LA Valley. Always a tough place to play. For today's game, in white, on the north half of the pool, left to right from where I'm sitting right now is the Citrus Owls. And in dark, with the black hats and white, white numbers, will be your Quest to College Cougars. Officials for today. On the far side, across from us, is Chris Jimenez. And on the near side is Cameron Allen. The one official, Chris is Mr. Benes, is down from Southern California, the Los Angeles area. Well, Ms. Allen is from Royal Granny, not too far from here. So a couple of the top ranked collegiate referees to handle this game. Cougars will be starting Colton Boyd, sophomore, 6'5", out of Porterville. And it looks like the Owls have Mateo Velasquez in the goal. I think that's who it is. 6'1", freshman out of Claremont. Cuesta wins the sprint. And Lane Parker takes it down inside the two. Draws the defense all the way aside. The Owls in a modified slough there, kind of letting the ball move around the outside. Tried to make help back on Ronan Bailey, freshman star out of Fresno, Clovis West High School. But the drop did not come back in time, and the Cougars went up 1-0. And, of course, as Eric Lang got hold grabbing on a drive, and that gives a power play to the Citrus Owls. Six on five, man advantage. And a chance to equal the, the score. Twenty second power play is over, and now back to even, and an errant shot over the cage sets up the Cougars fast break. Cougars have numbers on a three on two right now as they bring it in. Lane, Lane Porter all the way across. Pass just a little bit too high. And Cougars set up the regular offense. Again, the modified drop by the Citrus Owls. They force it in. That time Bailey forcing it in. Joshua Halipoff getting hammered. And that defender coming across with both hands on his back and sinking them is another exclusion. So another power play, this time for the Cougars. And a 20-second exclusion on Breck Whiney. <laughs> wasn't the cleanest power play goal, but there it is, right there. Cougars' Nick Taylor fumbled the ball, but still got a weak pass off to Joshua Holopoff who fumbled the ball as well, but skipped it underneath the goalie, and the Cougars are up 2-0. Quest is coming out where we talked about Citrus kind of dropping back in the two-meter position. Quest is in a very hard press. That's what got Klang in trouble last time, and he's still playing tough D right now. Klang number eight, overpass. As the Owls swing it, and then swing it back, Halapa playing defense. Just enough to disturb the left-hander. Yeah. 
jo Julian Nichols shot right there. Wide open shot for Klang. And Klang goes right over the goalie's head. Goalie's hands get up there quick enough. And Velasquez makes a save. Pass, great stop where Colton Boyd sniffed that one out. Long cross court pass. He got there almost the same time as the pass did and was able to, to stop the catch and shoot right there. By Guten Hopagian. Offensive foul on the Cougars. Joshua Halipov. which is kind of meandering up the course. And up top, we got a steal for the Cougars. And a great pass. And the Cougars will get a new shot clock and the ball out of bounds. So steal by Ronan Bailey. He could feel that he had both defenders on him. Great steal and a heads up pass over to Jacob Sill and Sill's shot. Deflected out of bounds, but the Cougars have a brand new shot clock and the ball in possession. There's Halipov again, and this time his shot is high over the cage. And Citrus coming the other way. Elbow out of the water on Klang. Gets the ball back after a little sock in the face. An opportunity to score right here with a new rule. One fouled outside of the seven meters, which is the second yellow cone you see out there. He's allowed to put the ball back in play without passing, which was the prior rule. Another player had to touch it. Now Klang can put it in himself and swim up and score and did. So the Cougars up 3 nothing. Klang after getting popped in the head and popping in a goal. Gets a little break for the Cougars as they go for a full body bag. Six on six swap, line shift. As we reach the halfway point of the quarter. So there's Cougars showing off their depth a little bit. Making a six on six sw switch. And a little grabby there. Daniel Rodriguez is excluded, so it's another power play for Citrus House. One of the things about coming in midway through a quarter, got to get in the flow of the game, and referee over there, Chris Jimenez, says we're not going to allow that kind of grabbing out there. Shot off the bar. Retrieved by the Cougars. And then put under. Put the ball under. While being guarded, it is a turnover in the game. Here's fouled inside. Rodriguez with the ball, he crosses it back over. And the shot wide. Right there, Colton Boyd stopped the, the shot right there. You can introduce him at the next tip. Okay. Blake. Yeah. All right, there's the Cougars goal right there on the fast break. Johnny Northcutt puts it in left-handed. Normally a right-hander, but that's where he got the pass and showing his versatility there. And right now I am joined by Blake. How's welcome, it going? Welcome to the broadcast. As the Cougars are up 4-0, 248 in the quarter. Oh. 
Get your levels up there. Now I can hear you a little bit better. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know where we are. Okay, you're this one. I'm, the, I'm two. You're one. Okay. Scooter's on. Have the numbers again. It's a steal by Rodriguez. Three on two quick if they get it. And too much hesitation for the Cougars. Got a little too fancy there. They had a couple of quick, easy shots. Tried to share the wealth. And the Owls pick their pocket, get the ball back. Again, Cougars still up in that hard press. And an Citrus on the board. That was an interesting shot, how he duck it under and then threw it out. Yeah, he kind of got himself in an awkward position, but wanted to get that shot off anyways. That little backhand was just enough as goalie Colton Boyd had come out to defend the inside pass. And it just, uh, wrong spot, wrong time right there. Yeah. Right spot, wrong, right time but for the Owls. So, yeah. And the Owls with the drop, and Cougars feeding it into the drop. But Citrus all over Daniel Rodriguez. And another power play for the Cougars. So you normally wouldn't expect that when you run the drop, you're trying to protect the inside. But that's a power play they did not want to give up. Cougars tried to force it inside again. Get the ball back out. And they're now even, power play is over. But it doesn't matter because Northcutt gets, gets the pass and the goal. That's coming in from Aaron Ray. Again, Ray have a, a bit of a legacy here. His mom and dad both played here at Quest College. Mom. Oh, lost it right yeah. there. You hear me? Uh, I can now. Yeah. Okay. So we Very strange. lost audio for a second there. And in that, in the meantime, Cougars got caught for an inside foul. That's a penalty. And they're going to have their lefty, number 15, Eddie Nava, taking the penalty shot on the Cougars. So when you say lefty, are you talking about the wing here? Or nope, he, he shoots left-handed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So they're letting Boyd stick way out. Normally the goalie's head has to be on the goal line. They're not even looking over there. The officials are moving this. They have not even taken a look at the goalie yet. There they go. There you go. Colton, get back <laughs> in that goal. Not going to let him get away with that big a jump. A nice skipper right there. And then uh, number 16, Ian Tower. He's the left-hander right there. 6'4", sophomore out of Covina. He's their leading goal scorer this year. 69 goals already for Tower. And all by himself. That's Cougar Serbian. Danilo Vucevic from Nice, Serbia. Left-hander made his move on the outside and snuck in there for the goal. Cougars back up 6-2. 45 seconds left. The Owls basically count on three major scores for them. As we said, uh, Ian Tower is our leading scorer. He leads the team with 69, and then 44 goals for both Julian Nichols, who scored their first goal, and Matty Roebuck. Number six, number five, and number two, respectively. Cougars force it in, oh. and there it is. Johnny Northcutt having a day. And with this nice backhand right there as Cougars jump the lead up to 
And again, that hard press from the Cougars, I don't know if that's something. It's, it's not fun when you have that. I much prefer having somebody uh, dropping back and get a free pass out there. And the Cougars turned that into a penalty shot as Daniel Rodriguez got inside water. Once he has advantage, his head's in front of the defender, and that defender fouls him from behind when he has a clear pass to the goal. That is a penalty shot, and that's what we're going to have right here. And there's Aaron Ray putting it away right there. So six seconds left. You'll see the question of Colton Boyd backing up under the crossbar for the long shot. Or there it is. There it is. The last guy's could have jumped out a little bit further to help there, but Cuesta started up 6-0, end the quarter 8-2. Okay, I'd like to join, uh, let everybody know that Blake's joining us here. He's a uh, former water polo yes. player. Where did you play water polo? In? I played uh, water polo at Atascadero High School. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're, here we have deep water both ways. <laughs> oh, Atascadero's pool was interesting. They had a shallow and a deep end, which is not <laughs> ideal for this sport. Yeah. Yep. So it's, it's, it's an interesting pool. Where'd you play? I, I played uh, down in Southern California at Foothill High School in Santa Ana. Oh, nice. And then I came up here and played at Cuesta College. And then I played at Pepperdine University after that for two years. And then uh, spent a little bit of time with the uh, U.S. National Program before wow. realizing I wasn't going to go to the uh, Olympics. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, would have been 96. I'm old. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was. I was be Atlanta, I think. So usually, usually the, we'll talk about a little bit about the positions of water polo. and Because uh, I know there's the wing, there's the flat, the point, and the center. So we kind of go, when I, we talk about it, we talk about the right-hander side on the far end of the pool from us if we're doing the, looking at the goal that, that Quest is defending. Mm -hmm. uh, the spot down closest to the goal on the far side would be the one. A little bit higher up by the cones would be two. The point would be three. And the left-hander side, which we're shooting from the left-hander side would be the four and five. Okay. So the set position, uh, most teams run a one single set with a man right in front of the goal. They kind of work that umbrella offense around it. Mm -hmm. And that would be the two meter player or the set position. Okay. Or center is some, what people are calling now. We are in the second period right now coming up. Cuesta up eight to two over the Citrus Owls. This is a Western State Conference mini tournament Western State Conference ranges from all the way down in Glendora, where the Citrus Isles are visiting from, all the way up to San Luis Obispo. It's an expansive conference uh, with eight teams, but also many hundreds of miles in distance. So what we have here today is a three-team mini tournament at the beautiful Cuesta College pool. Cuesta will be playing both um, the Citrus Owls and the Santa Monica Corsairs and the women's teams from both teams are up here too. So Santa Monica and the Citrus Owls will also play today for the both the men's and women's. So it will be Cuesta versus Citrus Men. Then the uh, Citrus Men versus Santa Monica. Citrus Women versus Santa Monica and we'll close out the day with Cuesta Men playing Santa Monica. Cuesta Women are unable to play today. They were unable to field the team uh, for this weekend. Hopefully they'll be back in action next week. It's been a tough year for a lot of teams, a lot of different protocols to go through, and sometimes you get nipped in the bud right there and you have to say reschedule a weekend. It's just part of the game, it's part of the year. I think everybody understands that all plans are fluid these days. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in water polo. More fluid there than anywhere else mostly because that's a bad dad joke. <laughs> 
and caught with a exclusion. That's a tough call right there as Cuesta's Grady Taylor turned away from the goal, but there's such a severe grab by Citrus's Abraham Biegas that they called the foul anyways, and Cougars on a power play. It's good that they're passing, but you guys can't wait too long. Right. Probing that defense and end up with a shot, with a near side shot to the goalie right there. That's not what you want to get out of a power play. A couple of things that most teams do in the power play is looking for that two on one advantage, move that ball around quickly. But the Cougars just couldn't seem to find the spot. How many periods are we playing today? Four? Well, we play quarters, and that would be four. four. All yeah. Right. <laughs> So we'll eight minute quarters, uh, but every time there's a foul, it stops. Uh, Cougars have probably got had an opportunity to have kicked out twice right there, because uh, that lead pass inside. There's a definite foul in there, but the far official Cameron Allen over there called called it up top, and the power play for the Citrus Owls as Sean Bernard is in the box for the Cougars. And can't quite see, is that number 12 right there, I think, scored that goal from what we would call the one spot. Sometimes when those, when those hat get, gets wet, the numbers kind of bleed a little bit from a distance, and that was number 12, Abraham, Abram Vegas. Another set for Stosh Perry is triple teamed, and they forced it in there. <laughs> That's what I want, you want to say, don't give me the ball. <laughs> I'm going to take a lot of punishment there. So again, the Cougars just showing off their depth. This is, this is their third new group of in there right now, mixing it around a lot, putting together different combinations. And again, poor, whew. A big mess in the <laughs> middle there, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a happy spot to be in. <laughs> when they're dropping back that hard, like, like I said earlier in the broadcast, when they drop, run that drop, the idea is to deny that two meter person the, the big score in front of the net mm -hmm. and make them shoot from the outside. It's like doubling down on Kareem and making, you know, Byron Scott shoot from the outside. That's a really <laughs> old reference, but that's what my basketball is, okay. So these days you wouldn't leave Steph Curry out there alone. So <laughs> I had to go back to the Kareem days. And there you see the out of position right there. For Quest is Dean Moody. Dean was on the outside. He's further in. And the ball got got into uh, number 16, um, Ian Tower, leading scorer lefty. He had position advantage in front of the goal. Moody tries to defend him from behind, and that's the, that's the exclusion. And there you go, Tower to lefty. Always good to have a lefty over the sixth spot for six on five. So, so one of the things we've, we've seen with water polo over the years is we talked about earlier in the broadcast about the uh, new you're allowed to get it live yourself yeah. on the outside. And I just wanted to see, it seems like every year the rules change. I mean, when I started playing, the, the game was based on the two meters and you'd throw it in the two meters, the two meter position, the set position right in front of the goal. And you could... And you throw it in, throw it in, and if you they had three straight regular fouls, that was an exclusion. But you'd run drives off each thing. It was about to set the position and just drives. And the game has changed so much right now, where an individual player doesn't need to work off another one. I've seen as you're watching this game, what are you seeing different from just your era? I mean, I'm way back. I mean, I mean, we're, we're, I'm like leather helmets football at back, but I mean, <laughs> it's pretty similar. There really hasn't been that much change, at least that I've seen play. so far. 
I know the passes are a lot farther. That's one thing I've noticed, and especially the, the goalies taking charge and throwing it back into the two position rather than throwing it at more at the three position. That's a big change I've noticed. The Cougars got caught inside the goal, the uh, two meter line. That's that red line right there. And that allowed their inside there without the ball or if the ball is further in, you can follow the ball. As long as your your position is not ahead of the ball with the ball there. So a missed opportunity for the Cougars on a power play. And kind of a ill-advised lob on Colton Boyd, and that gives the Cougars another fast break here. We, we see a cherry picker for the Fighting Owls, break Brick Weenie, Whiny. And saved by the call right there. Turned by Halipov with defense coming in at him. And Ronan Bailey just right there for the easy pass. Good connection right there. Those two kind of felt each other out. Halipov had the ball, saw, saw Bailey. Quick pass up and the goal. And maybe Breck Whiney might have been hurt because he's being subbed out right now. Got a little hitch in his giddy up as he walks back towards the bench. So that wasn't cherry picking. That was uh, looks like he's a little banged up. Again, that tried that overpass and sniffed out by Colton Boyd. And in that case, it, Boy, <laughs> Boyd is in a little bit of trouble right there. You got to get rid of that ball and find a way to keep it safe because right in front of the goal, he doesn't have much help. There's Jacob Sill. Swings it all the way over. And there's an open Nick Taylor. You see that? You can see the advantage of having that yeah. left-hander right there. Yeah. The cross, the they cross can't got him as well, exactly. So it makes that easy, quick pass and shoot. What would you call that tactic that they just used right there? Going under and then swinging over and grabbing the ball like that. I'll just get a little turn right there. Yeah, that's that's risky, but if you know you're being held, <laughs> 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 it makes it okay. I wouldn't do that. I I love that little move when you kind of if you have control of the player with the left hand and make that move and right. pop it. That's that can be fun. But uh, I guess an experienced player who's ready for that that can, that can be really embarrassing. He got away with it that time. A clean shot. As Lane Porter, as we talked about Aaron Ray earlier, uh, Lane's father played here at Cuesta College, then on to University of Pacific area. He had a stellar career at the four-year level. Uh, Lane's father, Kelly Porter, is the uh, all-time leading scorer here at Cuesta College, 239 career goals. Uh, pretty impressive. There's, I don't think there's anybody else over 200, so he had a, wow. a heck of a career here. And Lane has been kind of the opposite. He's a, he's a great defender, but he is closing in on some of the school's assist records. So Lane's a passer where his dad was a scorer. What's going on here? They just called a, what, what happened in this situation here? They just called it. I think he's called, it's going to be a penalty shot. Got Clang. I think they called that on Kling. I think he, he felt they had advantage right there and, and then Kling with the hard foul. So here you have Julian Nichols. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Again, that's a, one of those number things, right? That's number 16, is that? Who shot it in? I thought that was number five. All right, maybe Dean it was Moody. five. So there, uh, Julian Nichols for Citrus. Julian Nichols. Julian yeah, Nichols. so Julian Nichols. So a couple left-handers on the Citrus team. And they pull within 11-5. Cougars jumped out early. They held at least a four-goal advantage in almost the entire game. as Halipov's shot goes off the bar. The 
Again, alert play by Colton Boyd. Comes out and tips it away. And a great move by Lane Porter. Suckered him right in. Oh, wow. That was and the right shot. back. Wow. So Porter feigned the pass. As the defender came to him, he made the quick move, spun underneath, got the exclusion, and the quick right back pass for a goal right there. So Porter, the younger Porter, showing that he has all those scoring abilities his dad does. Cougars still up that hard press. We're talking about how the, the depth they have this year. And skip pass goes to Boyd. It was interesting there, he just threw it halfway rather than throwing it in first or second position. And kind of walking it up slowly with that drop. Not a lot of places to go right there. Well, those are good fakes from number six, from uh, Aaron Ray. Yeah. So that's kind of what, what they want him to do. One player coming up, no passing, set the defense on him. So the Cougars got the new shot clock, and they force it in there. As I said, drop coming right there. That wasn't, wasn't anything for Johnny Northcutt to do in there. There's a Cougars got caught off right there. I think that's a miscommunication right there because they left Julian Nichols all alone. Tried to keep that press up nice and high and left a little bit too much room for Nichols to slip away for a goal. Strecker bringing the ball up. Very busy in there down in front of the goal face for, for the Cougars. As that Citrus defense just collapses in. Shot blocked by Villegas. Cougars get a new shot clock. But it doesn't matter because only seven seconds left in the quarter. In the half. And here is... Wow. Yep, that just wow. snuck in there. Danilo Vujovic <laughs> hit that bar to kind of sit there, sit there in the line. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so here's a one-second play, another long shot like we did last saw last quarter. Colton Boyd sneaking out that could cost him. If that would have gone in, would they would have they gotten a point or not in this situation? No, not, not, right uh, he had to get that shot off before the the buzzer went. So we've reached the half. Cuesta up seven. That's the men 13. Citrus Owls six. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, like how you liking this game? So it's far. good. It's good. I haven't watched a water polo game in a long time, but seeing how <laughs> both teams are playing, they're both playing very fair. Uh, I'm like what I'm seeing. Do you know how uh, Cuesta has been doing so far in this season? Cuesta is, is 16 and three right now. Uh, they're now one and zero in conference. They just played on Wednesday against LA Valley, who was the was was the uh, state runner or regional runner up in 2019. So that's the last time we had playoffs was mm -hmm. 2019. So LA Valley traditionally a great team and a very tough Western State Conference uh, conference well league. <laughs> 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 so it's a very tough tough conference. Uh, and so you have, uh, you know, Citrus is, again is another playoff, perennial playoff team. Um, so, so far they've only played LA Valley, this their second conference game, and then later on today they'll play Santa Monica. So they'll have three of their five conference games done <laughs> this <laughs> So week. quickly, right. So, uh, I, like I said, this is one of those things where this conference is so wide. Driving down to Los Angeles on Wednesday, you know, 
really does kind of interrupt some of the kids' mm -hmm. studies. So, um, Quest is, you know, right there. They're, they they lost one time two weeks ago at their home cur tournament against Long Beach City, which is kind of a one-off. And uh, Long Beach City again, one of those premier teams. They were the state runner-up two years ago, but uh, a game the Cougars seem to have, but then let slip away. Um, that's their only loss at, at the California Community College Athletic Association level. Wow. Their other two losses were uh, to UC Davis and San Jose State, the doubleheader they played up in the Bay Area. Mm. So <laughs> 15 yeah. and 3. Uh, very good. That's really, that's really <laughs> They're good. They're really solid right now. It's and amazing, too, for even having a one-off season not playing last year. Yeah. It, it, it's quite amazing seeing how strong this team is and doing so well. Well, that, I think that's one of the big advantages Cuesta did have was they had a, a – brief schedule last year and we were able to practice most of the school year and we had a shortened schedule in the spring but being one of only two or well actually I think uh, uh, one other school played a little bit uh, community colleges that actually f tried to field the season last year that just that extra bit of work last spring has helped them te this team come in that much more focused um, and, and again like they, like they did when they went up to play San Jose State and UC Davis and I think that's what it kind of kind of helped them this year a little bit. That same thing last year, the Cougars went one and five, all against four-year yeah. schools. Right. Because the four-year schools were playing, but the community college level wasn't. Right. So they've been playing bigger, tougher competition, and that's making these games a little bit uh, easier on them. You know, you don't have the bigger physical athletes that were pounding on them <laughs> at San Jose <laughs> State that they do, do here at this level. As much depth, uh, you know. There's still, there's, we still plenty of big physical athletes here, but not every single guy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, real advantage for the Cougars. That's one of the, the real, real advantages was having that opportunity to play, made a big difference for this team, and uh, you know, and it kind of kept kept the kids who might have moved on or given up. Just an op another opportunity to, to do what they want, not wanted to do. I exactly. think a lot of people with a lost year like that it can be tough on them. As a student, was it tough on you? I mean, oh. it's, it's, I can't imagine. It's, it's, uh, you know. You know, I'm curious. Were there any restrictions in place or things that they had to do for it? Like, you can't really distance if you're piling on top of each other in the water. <laughs> There's an official. <laughs> Chris Amenis just handed me a red card. I didn't even <laughs> say anything about him yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, well, we were testing uh, every, following the protocols of both the NCAA and whoever uh, and our group. So there would be times the team would be t testing four times a week. Wow! Uh, to play a game, one game, just to make sure you had your, you know, you had your, your daily one for Questa, your, your Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But then you also had your 48 hours before a game. You had to have one, so you had one on Thursday. And make sure, and we followed the protocols of both our group and the other group. So the other group said more testing than we did more testing plus <laughs> our testing. So it could have been, it was just kind of crazy. So, and then one of the th things that they found was, was uh, I mean, this is, our men's team right now is the 100% uh, vaccinated. Oh, okay. So they've really made a, made a commitment to these guys. They were not going to lose any time. Right, to, they're, to, they're to so committed to the game, they'll do anything yeah. to keep playing. And that's great. That's, well, that's the, awesome. The vaccine's pretty yeah. <laughs> pretty, yeah. pretty common, but but it's 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 it showed that 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 they they're on board with what they need to do to get this get this team going. So and they're well on their way to the 17th win right now. So they're doing well. What's the score so far? We have Quest up 13, six. All right. And the Citrus Owls six. And the sprint goes to Cuesta. <laughs> fighting and fighting in there. Just can't get anything off of Stosh Perry. <laughs> he had the meat hook on that. <laughs> he didn't have a good hold of the group ball, but he was going to try and get some shot off somehow, huh? No give in the Cougars' defense. Everybody out there pressing hard. Citra's still on their side of the half of the pool. 
And a long pass. And Cougars did switch up goalies right now, as you can see. We have 1A in there. And that is Garrett Wilson. Foul and go right there by Citrus. Peter Herrera fouled him, snuck off, and the rest of Cuesta just waited around for somebody to shoot. <laughs> so there you go, Peter Herrera, a little cherry picking goal. Actually, I wouldn't even say, say that's cherry picking. He left with yeah. a couple seconds on the clock. Yeah. The foul was there. We'll say it's a heads-up play by Peter Herrera. <laughs> <laughs> and that's seven goals for Citrus. Not, bad, not a bad outing. Cougars have been piling on with 13, though, right now. And there's Stoshberry. That time he had a little bit of time. He didn't get beat up that time. He had a nice outside shot cross corner. Cougars build their lead back up to eight. What do you think about the difference here? I mean, you see these two tactics right here. The citrus has been dropping back. Well, Quest has been pushing forward. It's quite and interesting Quest has been to see. running yeah. the hard, hard press. Yes. And there, there you have Garrett Wilson. A little late coming out of the goal to help his teammate right there. It's Caleb Ray. Got out of position and a power play for the Owls. It's one of those things with a hard press, if you get out of position, you can get caught quickly. And the rebound goal looks to be Abram Viegas. So shot off the post. Viegas got a hold of it and shoved it right back in, just under Wilson's arm. Okay. Cougars got a little bit lost on that play right there. Seven has the ball. Indeed, Moody was under underwater when the pass came and skipped past him. Twelve from Citrus has the ball, passes it down to the wing. Not yet. So, hey, anyway, Trevor, welcome to the broadcast. <laughs> Hello and welcome. My name is Trevor. And you're watching Cuesta Water Polo playing against uh, Citrus Citrus Owls. Uh, October 9th, 2021. Right now it is 14 to 8. Cuesta's winning. Is in front. Shot by Dean Moody right there. Collected by Mateo Velasquez. Having a pretty decent game. Okay. So, uh, Pete, who are the who are the Cuesta players to watch out for? Well, Cuesta's got a ton of good players. We, we talked about Lane Porter earlier, who was uh, all state his freshman year. And then we have Danilo Vujovic, left hander from Serbia. And we have uh, Joshua Sill, Joshua, uh, Jacob Sill, Joshua Halipov, Eric Klang. There's a ton of all-conference players coming back and some of the new rookies. Okay. How many lefties do you guys have on the team? Oh, I don't know right now. I'd, I'd say at least three. At least three. So. As the Cougars have a lot of depth this year. Cougars go and score another one. It's 15 to 7. A 
little break right here as the officials get themselves set up. And wait for the Cougars to exit the pool as they've done another six for six change. So, so there we go, another goal right there for Citrus. Number 16, that's your, their leading scorer, Ian Tower. He's up over 70 goals right now for the season. So, I mean, he's he's on fire right there. We always talk about left-handers always have the red light to shoot uh, because they're so rare in the game. It makes it pretty easy, easy for them to get an opportunity. That's true. Le lefties are pretty rare inside water polo. <laughs> but uh, Quest, I mean, he, he's up over 70 goals. Quest doesn't have anybody over 30. Oh. So it's the amount of depth for a team that's won 17 games. Yeah. <laughs> And mixing around a lot, so. So you can say that he was—they're their best. He's his best player. Or their, their leading scorer, yeah. Best player, yeah. The ball, ball under right there for the Cougars. And an offensive kickoff. <laughs> As Peter Herrera tried to sneak away like he did for his goal a few minutes ago, and this time got caught kicking off to get away. And two hands on the foul right two there, hands. just trying to sink him at, at two six meters. Five. And Ian Tower earns himself a 20-second exclusion. Power play for the Cougars. Cougars moving around nicely into the post. And there's Ronan Bailey. He's on fire today. 17 scoring the goal, create, making the score now 16-8. So where, where did you play and what, what position did you play? So I played at uh, Water Polo at Paso High for four years with right. um, Trey Ede on the Quest of Water Polo team. Okay. Yeah, I played with Trey. We played Water Polo for a few years together. And uh, positions I played, um, I r mainly played wing along with some set guard up at the top. And then occasionally I would go down and I'd play a little bit of set depending on like if our, our lead set player was ever like out or something like that, I'd go down to that position. Because I was a big guy back inside high school. So it was, it was <laughs> one of those big guys down on the, that set position to fight off the set guard. And the Cougars right there left, left Ian Tower alone. Maybe they didn't miss a scouting reporter, just a little comfortable with a seven goal lead as Tower just had an easy shot just to pick it up and put it away right there. Yeah. Sounds about passing to the wing. Well, set, set D is always one of the funnest positions, I think, think to play. I mean, it's, it really is. I mean, Cause it's like you start the top and you're kind of just like the main like leader. You got like like the main person that everyone passes the ball back to. So right there, Ian Tower was at set D. Set's also pretty fun when you're down at the bottom, like really up close up against the goal. And you like get that ball like set into you, and you just do a little backspin on to throw it into the goal, and you get, get some cool like close shots into the goal. I think I it's a lot funner when they're when they're running a press, as we'll see. See, Citrus is running that hard drop. Yeah. And you know everybody's. The, the, <laughs> it's a jailbreak. Everybody's coming on top of you. Yeah. <laughs> when you're in there. And the ball under. Oh. So he just kept on forcing it. So, Maddie Roebuck. Just kind of forced it. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. He could, didn't have the position. He was outside, moved outside the goal, goal post. Number 10 has the ball. And gave Let's Wilson time to swim over and just put the ball under. And a little grab there and a goal. Go, not to kick out. Number seven got kicked out. So, I'm going so to okay, six so on the, five. The, the, with the new rule right there, uh, one, after the exclusion, uh, you're allowed to put the ball in or make that pass right away, and it, and it is a goal. But at that point, the official, Chris Amendes, had said, hey, I'd stop play to make the correction. You have to wait for me to put my yeah. hand back down. No goal. And then the Cougars actually missed the power play right there. So They missed that six-on-five play with that kick out. Yeah. You know, this is a tough game to officiate, and Chris Amendes is one of the best down from down south. Oh, and... And a great catch and shoot right there. By Matty Roebuck. And so Roebuck gets that back, that goal he missed. Gets that like, little redirect. Back. Sends so. that redirect right into that corner of the goal, which but now creates it 16 to 10. So the, the official down here uh, near side, Chris Amen is one of the most respected officials down in Southern California. And he's when he makes his call, you're, he's going to stay by it. And yeah. then we have Cameron Allen, who's just been moving up the ranks right locally for Quest to College, and, and he's, she has been a fantastic young 
collegiate official for us. I love making those redirect shots in water polo when you're right up against the goal and that ball just comes flying over you and you just give that little push and push into the goal. Those are some of my favorite shots to make. I remember I made one on like Rigetti during my high school year that like I just came out of the water and like twist, twist the ball and then shot into the goal. Those are some fun shots to make. It's just that good feeling, that connection with your teammate with perfect pass, perfect yeah. spot. You going up at, at that right time. You get that lined up, you make that eye contact, yeah. you like, can tell they're going to throw it to you and you just lift up, ball comes flying over and you just redirect that ball right into the goal and you're just like, let's go. Aaron Ray right there, shot tipped out of bounds by Viegas. Going to a two meter. And the Cougars have a new shot clock. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Again, that drop. Cougars trying to drive against that drop a little bit. They get find oh. a wide open. Johnny Norkin, I don't know how he got that open there with a drop, but he, everybody's looking elsewhere. And then he I don't know if he put on his invisibility cloak or something like that, because all of a sudden he was wide open. Yeah. So he took that shot. Just a little bit, a little bit off to the side. Yeah. Citrus again. Weston now in the drop for the first time this year, this today. Goalie gets the ball. And oh. North Cut and Tower get a little tangled up. And Tower stays his ground while North Cut decided he's just going to go right through. Turnover on the Cougars. Yep. It's one of those things where your coach just tells you to spin and swim. Don't get all yeah. caught up in that stuff. Spin away and swim, find open water you to gotta get keep into. Yourself, you gotta keep yourself calm no matter what they're doing to you. So. Oh, kick out. Wow, tough call right there. I don't know if he saw something in the background right there. But I can tell right now, as he came up, Matty Roebuck is not feeling good. But he's, again, that's one of those situations Roebuck got caught earlier where he had the ball in his hand. Yep. You, you're allowed to put the ball under, but uh, I think they got a little bit more matty than the ball. That got a little time. bit more aggressive at that so point and started pushing not just the ball, but yeah. the player kind of down too yeah. into the water, which caused it a kick out. So, you, you, so they're a little over aggressive right there for the Cougars. Again, put the ball under, not not the player. And that's going to be a power play for the Fighting Owls. 23 seconds left in the third quarter. Question with a solid 16 10 lead. 10 goals is definitely more goals than they would hope to give up today. But uh, that's what I heard. But with six goals in their favor, they're okay. The interesting thing about the seeding part process in water polo at the collegiate level, at the, at the three CAA level, is it's a plus or minus three goals. Okay. So every if you win by six, it still counts as three. If you win by ten, it counts by three. Yeah. And your advantage if somebody if they beat somebody by two and you beat somebody by one, Citrus would have the advantage. Yeah. In that team right there, but yeah. so having a th plus three over the Citrus. And being ahead of them in conference is going to be a big factor for the Cougars returning for, to the playoffs for the 42nd consecutive year. Okay. West we're, College, we should be noted, to has never <laughs> missed the playoffs unless you want to count last year's where they only played NCAA teams. Yeah. So this is they're looking for their 42nd consecutive well, last year. Well, last year was pretty chaotic, <laughs> to say <laughs> the least. And there, there wasn't even an NCAA championship yeah. that they wanted to get into. So. Um, Running a six on five right now. So power play opportunity for Citrus Owls. Citrus Owls. Six on five advantage. And, and score. there we go. Julian Nichols. Really, Citrus really relying on those southpaws today. Yeah. Nichols and Tower. Uh, They're hard to play against because you don't see them very often. So What we kept call the four five side over there yeah. really is, is their power side over there. So. And again, they are not shy about shooting. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Little lob shot at the buzzer by Vujovic. Try for that, buzz, that buzzer beater. It, it feels better to shoot it than have it in your hand. Yeah. Point. So you gotta let that. You might as well let that fly. Either take the risk, <laughs> or you don't. It's not that cool. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Are you a left-hander? You sound like a left-hander. No, you I'm say not that. a left-hander. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I think it'd be much more useful, maybe, yeah. than waterfall season if I was a lefty. No, I'm a, I'm a ready. I'm a plain old ready. I remember I was trying um, to figure out what to, what to do there. But back to four. This is the er closest they've been since the early parts of the first quarter. Yeah. So they they have not broken that four goal lead, and I, I think 
Cougars, like I said, the plus three, minus three, they get down to four, they kind of bump it back up. You yeah. Know, they don't want to get down to that three where it might turn into two. They don't want to have that happen. Trying to keep seating. it above, trying to keep it above. And right now they're on the cuffs. It's 16 12, so they're up by four. Yep. So they can well, keep it that way. If you like a high scoring game, this is a great game to watch right now. 28 no, goals and three quarters. It's a it's like a close <laughs> game, but it's like not a stressful like close game where you're like going neck and neck. Well, you've seen seen that the Owls have been pushing and pushing and pushing. They they have not gone very far in the, on their bench. They don't have as much depth as the Cougars do, as you can see. Yeah. Where the Cougars are still rotating six and six, and they've rotated their goalies and they've they've kind of kind of working their way through this game. Uh, remember, they still both teams still have another game after this game. So that's yeah. You got to play Santa Monica so next. So the Cougar, Cougars will be a little bit better rested. Um, but the Owls, good team, nine and three right now. Yeah. They're they're uh, team many, to be reckoned with. How many subs do they have? I don't know. I didn't even take a look. Well, they have four goalies, which is a lot. That is a lot of goalies. <laughs> how, many do we, how many does uh, Cuesta have? Oh, they have a solid 18. No, how many goalies? Oh, two. Just, two, just Colton two. Boyd and, and, and Garrett, and they've already oh. sp split. So, I played at the high school. We only had one goalie. <laughs> so you just stay in. <laughs> so it's be nice having uh, two. Or, f or four. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> with, makes with it makes it fun for practice. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a little tougher to get four goalies in, into a game. Yeah. So... It's not one of those, you know, you can always get a field player in for a minute or two. Yeah. It's a little tougher to <laughs> with the goalies. I just know that, like, some goalies actually do like to play in field. Like, our goalie that we had at the high school, like, he really wanted to play in field, but we really needed him in goal. He was, like, one of our main backbones, just being, like, that goalie. But he was a good field player when he came in. Well, a good goalie makes you, allows you to do a lot of different things. And you can see, I mean, Citrus feels that they have a, Pretty strong goalie. Yeah. And they've been running that drop back. but Running that drop play instead of running a press. Letting the Cougars shoot from the outside. And the Cougars are still powering in there and getting those goals inside as well. You see the Citrus has... Just counting on the bench right there. They got a, a full five yeah. sitting on the bench, and it looks like they traveled with just one other goalie. Didn't bring out four. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, have, yeah, we, we have a lot more compared to uh, when I look over at our when I look over at our bench and see some people standing up. You tell that we have much more. Cougars have a lot of depth, and they have a lot of quality depth this year. That's good. About to start off with the sprint. I remember when I did the sprints. My coach would tell me last minute, he'd just be like, you're going to go do the sprint today. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> now you played, played for Dwayne? Huh? Dwayne? Uh, Dwayne, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Dwayne McRoy. Dwayne McRoy is a great coach. He's, a, he's an icon up there. He is an icon. He's, he's a tradition. I played for him, and then I played for um, the, n the new coach, Colin Moore. Because okay. Dwayne yep. McRoy is doing the girls' team now. Yes. And then Dwayne, uh, Colin McMoore has taken up the um, boys. I think Colin, it's, it's, like, it's like the mafia up there for McRoy. Every time he tells, tries to get out, they drag him back in. He's, he's, he's kept that program like alive. Like you said, he's an icon. We need him. Yeah. He you can't leave. Him. Tries to get out, and they rope him back in. Yep. Every time I try to get out, they just keep dragging me back in. <laughs> that happens. He's a good. He's a great coach. I love that guy. Well, we've had plenty of players here from Paso Robles who've, who've had great careers. Yeah. Uh, just a few years ago, Zach Tucker. Yep, I remember Zach so Tucker. Zach Tucker uh, played with our assistant coach over there, Brad. Brad Dennis here. Brad's from Visalia. Both of them transferred up to uh, San Jose State to play for the play for the Spartans. Yep, I remember Zach Tucker. I remember how much of a star player he was. Very good player. So. And then you got a then you got a young a young Paso player over there, Trey. Yeah. And yeah, the Cougars do have a did bring back a significant number. I think they have six players back from the 2019 squad. Okay. Uh, including all American, you know. Uh, Lane Porter and some of those other guys who have come back from those that year. Yeah. 
uh, Halep up and Do you remember those, how, those uh, sophomores on there. Those sophomores are basically third-year guys. You've got Colton Boyd in the goal. This is his third season at Cuesta. Yeah. Lane Porter, Eric Klang, Jacob Sill, Josh Halepov, Caleb Ray, all these guys are in their third year, but they didn't have that year last year. They had those five games, and that was it. So this is kind of their – this is their sophomore year. So you have that group, those six guys back. Then you had the team came in last year, yeah. and then you have this year's freshman. So they have a lot of depth. Having those six guys back makes a big difference for this group because of that amazing experience they've had already had, and then to go through that. So now it's, it's the main thing is that like the returning players, they always help because they have that experience, so they know what like who they've played, like the teams they've played before, and stuff like that. And you can tell when a team loses a bunch of their experienced players, how like their difficulty or how the game goes compared to that. And the rhythms of the season are, are part of the thing. So you, yeah. have, you have the ups, downs. You have the tournaments. You know where you're going. You know these things. If you have all freshmen, it's a little bit more difficult. Also with the chemistry you know, along the team. Like right. you, either, you ride with the team, and then some of them take off, and then the chemistry is all different and all right. crazy. So, so that continuity has really helped the Cougars this year. As you can see, you know, Citrus just has the four sophomores. So How small was the team in um, last year? Oh, it was, it was large. It was it was large. So, it was so large. A lot of these are second-year freshmen, too. So And... And uh, they've decided to redshirt many, a lot of players. Uh, so the, almost all of last year's incoming class stayed, and either is playing or redshirting. So yeah. some of these are, are second-year freshmen kind of things. Yeah. Uh, but the opportunity to play here is, is just too great to pass up. And so it was good that you guys had a season last year, so you guys could yeah. still keep them in shape. Well, six <laughs> games. Six games. <laughs> it's still something. Yeah, and, but and that, that that was that was the thing. Was, I don't think, I I don't think these these kids at, in that time. Yeah, I mean, we talked about their dedication to the, the whole team being vaccinated, but the kids coming in and the testing, so you didn't have people missing. It was, you know, at, at, at that time last spring, the only time you got out of the house yeah. was to come and play water yep. polo and immerse yourself in chlorine. I mean, how much, I mean, th that's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> still keep it in shape. It's still good to go swimming. It's still good to be inside a nice cold pool in those, yeah. those hot days. So that, that was, uh, you didn't have many many uh, missed practices. That was that a... Was, uh, Target on those kids' Which calendar every day. So. So I'm not you sure you what sit we have going here. You're ready we, to get out there. We you're like have a book problem here. And so we have two members of the, uh, of course, the women's team over there. They're not going to be playing today, but uh, the goalie Morgan Weldon and last-minute game cancel. Yes. Yeah. Just who shorter who players. Were they, play? uh, they were still going to play uh, Citrus oh, and they Citrus too. And Santa Monica. Okay. It's supposed to be a six-game thing with men's and women's double header, double double header. Yeah. <laughs> double double header. <laughs> so. so. Hopefully we can get this sorted out and get on to that fourth quarter. Yeah. Or you and I can just sit here talking. Let's talk a little bit more about our okay. water polo days. Yeah. <laughs> and let everybody know how going. No, I do, I do miss the sport a lot. It was like, I was at that, that time, I was like, I just, I was like, I knew that like, I needed to focus on like some other stuff. So I was like, I was going to do Cuesta. I thought about doing Cuesta. And I decided to like focus on just other things. And I do miss it. I sit there and I like, I went to like one of my past high school games and went and watched some of them play and saw some of my old teammates and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I do miss the days of playing water polo. You always go go to the dark side and, I wear, could. White and wear white. <laughs> <laughs> and wear white. <laughs> Bad guys wear white in water polo. <laughs> the refs. <laughs> I actually did. I ref for soccer years and years ago, so I could probably be ref for water polo. <laughs> A little bit of the same concept. Yeah. The offsides and all those things. You just don't. You just can't kick. Yeah. You just use your hands. Yeah. So Cuesta wins the sprint in this fourth and final period. And there's Porter with the ball. They're dropping off Porter. He moves himself in a better position and, and puts it away. Like I said, just because a guy has a lot of assists doesn't mean he's not going to score when you leave him alone. Yeah. <laughs> So I think that's, that's at least Porter's third goal of the game. So that's a nice day, a nice hat trick from three for number, drop, three, three, for sure number three. Hopping, you're going back and forth. You can't leave that guy alone or he's going to take that advantage. 
Long overpass, and we see that some goalies can swim as Garrett Wilson comes out and steals the ball. Takes that ball away and gets ready to pass it. And he finds Porter as they try to go full counter here. Porter finds somebody across, I mean, just wide open. But, but that cross court pass with Porter just shows you that, that yeah. his vision on that and the pool is just amazing. You gotta watch that because that person's in front of you. It's easy for them to come up and like uh, grab that ball if you if you uh, uh, huck it over the players. Foul call. Matty Roebuck gets an opportunity back. Nick Taylor just a little bit slow on that steal. Opportunity. Another kick out. So another exclusion. I'm not sure who's who's out. Uh, number and, 11. And that will be Josh Halipoff. So he wasn't sure. He was, what? Who? Me? Yeah. Uh, but he'll take a 20 second break as a power play for the Owls. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you're like, you wonder what you did after you get kicked out. Oh, and there you go. That tower again, number 16. Yeah, number 16. So, again. <laughs> From that side? <laughs> so. He's yeah, he probably has five, six goals in this game, and, and the Cougars are just playing him as just as straight up as everybody else. So they haven't made any adjustments for him. You tell and that their their strong side is the um, their left side, which sometimes isn't was really rare. You don't always see the right side being the strongest, but it really allows you to do a lot of different things. Yeah, have, have, kind of play a backwards offense. So, but lead back down to four, and now it's back up to five. Yeah. So, so we see the Cougars aren't let. The bending but not breaking. Yeah. So they're, they're letting them. Citrus is getting on the board, but Quest is maintaining that lead. I and mean, this is going to be. We'll see. We got six minutes left. We could hit 40 in this game. This yeah. is just, just an offensive game. It being 18 to 13. A little pressure out there. Jacob Sill. He's keeping him out there. High overpass, oh. got tangled up right there. Porter got tangled up going oh. for the ball. But he had his head turned to the ball, so he looks like he was playing more the, the offensive player than the ball. Maybe kick out for number th uh, with so, number three. So Porter is sent for a 20-second exclusion. And that's six on five. And a power play opportunity, six on five for Citrus again. Do you guys still call it a six on five, or do you guys call it a power? I would call it a six on five, but the proper, proper term is power play. Proper term, power play, or yeah. yeah. So those are those advantages you gotta take. You gotta take when you like when someone gets kicked out. It's like you know that you're a man down. So it's like you gotta make sure you take advantage of that. Yeah. Rare opportunities. Uh, a little bit too sneaky by half there by Clank. He got caught with trying to slip a lob pass on the counterattack and that great save right there by Mateo Velasquez. And Citrus is wide open on the near side. And they go for the lob, oh. top spin lob there. You see, see the little spin right there, yep. kind of curve it in. Give it a little, little bit of top English, spin and it goes in and hits there. the post and bounces out. And just, just wide off uh, the post. Oh, we got wide open over there. Playing oh. again on the weak side. Oh, great move by Porter. <laughs> Just, oh! And he goes to the left, close to that long. And oh! Then, and, but, uh, and then with the garbage, the counter right attack. There, <laughs> just the garbage goal right there by Ronan Bailey. He was right there and ready. Porter to makes that spin, turns it to his left hand, makes the shot, yep. gets tipped. Great save by Viegas, but the garbage by uh, Bailey is just, just, just an exciting play it's right perfect, there. Perfect, perfect spot. He was in the perfect <laughs> place with that, that ball when it oh. when he got tipped. It came right to him, and he just went and just took that thing in. Just. Just natural talent right there. It's just fun to watch. Watching water polo versus playing water polo, you can see so many different things that you don't see in the water. Just, it's just so different to me. The tower just <laughs> getting away with shove, shoving over there. And there we get the offensive. The offensive was coming somewhere for Quest because it, Al's getting a little fighting, more fighting than just being just Al's. Yeah. He was just. He was just playing his part of being Risky that annoying person right there. Everybody's here. open in the middle. Pass it over. Oh. 
But now the question just doesn't have the balance right there. There, they're setting it up a little bit. They go put they dump it inside. Set. Yeah, they just wrapped him up right there. Two hands on him, stranglehold. And here's the lefty. You know, you know, Vujovic wants to shoot that. <laughs> Passing it back and forth, trying to find a, find an opening. There it is. Oh, clicker pass. Oh, oh, just that could have been a really good redirect. Such a, such a heads up pass right there. Had the goalie up in the air. Aaron Ray, unselfish play, just unlucky right there for North got off the post. See, that's like, the redirects are fun to shoot, but they're hard to, you have to like time it perfectly to be able to hit that in. A little bit lower and that would have probably come down anybody hit the bar. Ethan Strecker gets tangled up right there. Oh, two's by himself. And he makes a pass while open. That's surprising right there, and Cougars able to recover. And there's still a still man down. Six on five advantage for the Owls. The Strecker's in the box for another two seconds. Got a drive coming in. And here comes Strecker. And there's a goal from 17. Woo. Wilson was not ready for that. I think Wilson got caught looking. Yeah. And put that right over his head, hands in the water. That's that's a tough goal to take, even when you're up 19-14. Got to keep those hands light. Make your balls up in the shooting position. Yeah, be ready at all times. You got to be in those that, that position where the, your hands like right like right below the water. So right when that ball gets thrown, your hands just come flying up to block, block that shot. So back within five. We we're up by six. Now, now we're, now we're uh, down by, f or uh, not down, down, up by five. Again, it's crucially the cushion, cushion for the Cougars to have that yeah. three goal lead. And uh, they're getting a lot of good action and saving their saving everybody for the second game. They shouldn't have anybody worn out. They had the extra rest today. Uh, and they get to watch Citrus and Santa Monica play the next game. So lots of time for the Cougars. They have a new shot clock, 2.37, or two, just over 2.30 left in the game. And they'll have another new shot clock as that goes off yep. the goalie. If the goalie ball tips is out. tipped out by a field player, it is a turnover, tipped out by the goalie, it, it means the shot was on goal and it's good enough to get you another shot clock. Yep. So. Cougars have another 30 seconds. Getting that, that new shot clock. I think they're just going to have, I would assume at this point they would just pass it around. But they did just get another shot clock, so they might as well pass it around again. I remember that being so a there thing. So there is, as you hear the bench calling for patience. <laughs> they don't need another goal. They want another goal, but they don't need another goal. Oh, and there we and go. There, there you go. So that time, Northcutt got, kept the position. The defense was spreading out a little bit more as Cuesta came, you know, passed the ball around. Had multiple shooters, so each defender had to react, and they got a window into Northcutt for an easy sweep shot. Yeah. You have that new shot clock. You gotta remember you have time. You have time to pass the ball around and try to get something open for that perfect shot. And that's a long time. That was three straight shot clocks yeah. for Citrus to play defense right there. It's tougher to stay engaged on defense than it is offense. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So Tower again. Yeah, Tower's got uses the, he's a lefty, but he uses that right arm effectively to shove people <laughs> around. There's Julian Nichols, the other lefty, enjoying a big game. Oh. Aaron Ray got caught chasing the ball right there and lost his man. Luckily, the skip shot off the bar saved the Cougars from another goal. So 20 to 14, minute 30 left. Minute 30 left in the fourth quarter. Oh. Try passing the ball to set. That goalie was there, ready to go. Yep. If you can't shoot the ball, you can't throw it in two meters unless you don't like your two meter man. Yeah. That's kind of the general rule. Because the goal is you won't be allowed to slip slip out if he knows you're not going to shoot it. Yeah. So that's what happened right there. So then it comes a two on one. <laughs> See if two guys attacking one person. And then we got a couple of le little left hander feud, feud right there is they number both two, got Danilo out. Bujovic from Cuesta. And number five, Julian Nichols from Citrus. A little bit of an altercation. Never, never, never quite made it back all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> no. kind, of, kind of stopped and did their own thing. And uh, 
official Cameron Allen decided, you know, why don't you both take a break? We'll just go five on five, and we're going to give the ball back to Citrus, or Cuesta here. So Cuesta yeah, has possession. Little, had a little bit of an altercation. That yeah. Got them. This is how you doing? I don't didn't like what you did. What do you think of that? Yeah. Well, I don't like what you did, and there we go. Well, why don't you guys both take a break? So, but both will come back in. Uh, I don't see either coach putting a sub in, so they'll make it through the last minute of the game. Yeah. Cuesta's up 20 to 14. Might as well. It's toward the end. And an offensive foul called on the Cougars. Oh, timeout. Didn't see quite who that was on, but if Mr. Jimenez saw it, then it happened. <laughs> I think it was on 14. So Citrus comes up with the six goal play right here with 50 seconds left. Coach John Marsh is earning himself a yellow card. Uh, I, th I think that's a benevolent yellow card right there at this yeah. point. You know, as you're up to six with the final minute, and, you know, it's one of those things you say you get protect your players. You take the yellow card. Yeah. You made your point. And that's okay. You know, you just gotta don't want. It. This can be you know when you give up 20 goals, you can get frustrated if you're on that other end of that 20 goals. Yeah. And you just want to make sure everything's clean and calm and. Last thing you want in a game with this far, with this large of an advantage is an injury or something, a red card or losing a player or some yeah. sort. So. Yeah, we'll keep, you want to keep the game clean. You guys are here. You guys don't want to get don't get too aggressive and for something to happen. Just keep it calm and just ride out the last 50 minutes or 50 seconds. So Coach Martian's 17th year, or 18th year. We could good count last year. Uh, at Cuesta, he's one of the two coaches we've had here. Terry Bowen started the program in 79, and kept it going for 25 years. John played for his second and third teams before going on to UCLA. And then came back as his coach, as the new coach. John Marsh did win us, coach some high school. He won a CAF title for Santa Maria High School. Oh. That, that you didn't know that Santa Maria had a CIF title in their in their trophy case. And that was thanks to Coach John Marsh. Okay. No, I did not know that. Something he did before coming up here to Quest College. I remember playing Santa Maria. One of their four schools. They got a few. Yeah. Well, I think they only have three. Then Orkut has one now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cougars just kind of running around, passing around. They got there's no shot clock. It's just the end of the game. But again, Danilo Vujovic, who just got excluded, uh, took a shot there at the end. Of course, yeah, not his fault. Shot. It's not his fault. He's left-handed. He needed to take a shot. Yeah. <laughs> so Might as well. So that concludes today's game. Your quest to Cougars improved to 17 and three on the season, two and zero in the Western State Conference with a 20 to 14 win over the Citrus Owls. The Owls fall to nine and four on the season. They're, they're having a good year, but it's tough to come up here and play. They'll play one more game. They're playing the next game against uh, Santa Monica. And actually right now getting in the water is the Citrus women's team and Santa Monica's women's team. And then following that will be the men's and women's teams from Citrus, and, or men's teams from Citrus and Santa Monica. And then Cuesta takes on Santa Monica's men. So that does it for our broadcast here. Thank you very much for hey, joining us. You're welcome. And, uh, for all of us here at Cuesta TV, I'm Pete Schuler. This is Dylan. And this is Trevor Draghi. Joining the broadcast. Trevor, sorry. I got Dylan earlier. We can't mix up. <laughs> yeah. So thanks again for joining us. And we'll be back for our next broadcast. Uh, we'll be Cuesta Sports Monthly, and we'll hope to see you then. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Trevor. Hey, too.